The Republic of Venice is one of the strongest nations at the start of Europa Universalis IV. Despite being a republic, the Venetians have managed to expand considerably, attaining most of the coastline of the Adriatic Sea and having footholds all around the Aegean and other parts of the map, which in EU4 itself is not necessarily shown because they were small footholds, so you wouldn't make a full province just for a little bit of a land unless you're playing mods which actually do that but that's a story for another time the origins of the venetians are a little bit tumultuous they started off at the end of the 600s after the collapse of the western roman empire and the invasion of the lombards and the various other barbarians within the italian peninsula communities of roman latin speaking former citizens of the empire managed to band together and they form coastal lagoon communities that had natural fences and eventually came under the control of the Eastern Roman Empire, albeit they did call themselves still the Roman Empire, not the Eastern one. We call them the Byzantines or the Eastern Roman Empire to differentiate from the Western one from historical perspectives. But as far as the Venetian people of the late 600s were thinking, they were Romans loyal to the Roman Empire as one of the last enclaves within the Italian peninsula from these communities which banded together eventually the Republic of Venice came to be and it lasted for 1100 years longer than the actual Empire period of the Roman Empire at least the Western Roman Empire if we are to put it into historical terms right by 1444 due to the amount of trade that the Venetians did they managed to grow into one of the strongest entities around the area and they influenced pretty much everything when it came to the politics of this area including including the politics of the Italian as was the Balkan Peninsula. We start in our game here with quite a sizable army and quite a sizable fleet. In fact, we have uh, need for more ships though. So what we're going to do is we're going to recruit some more galleys. We're going to queue up uh, one galley in pretty much all of our provinces in the uh, Venetian bits. And we're going to start with the fairly standard estates over here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then uh, you should check out my estates guide. Link in description for that. Take note, the private trade fleets are absolutely mandatory as this nation since we do rely on our trade fleets considerably when playing as the Venetians and we're gonna use the burger loans that we just took to uh, hire some mercenaries and get some more ships let's start with the extra ships a few more galleys around never hurt no one right should go up to say uh, 38 galleys for now is fine that is only 10 over our naval force limit so it's acceptable let's get our rivals here the Byzantines obviously the Milanese also we also will start getting a claim on the Byzantine lands a claim on the Serbian lands just in case the Serbians do not ally the Byzantines because that's a possibility and we're gonna get some alliances if we can get an alliance with the Austrians that's fine for the beginning part take note a lot of the times Austria starts as rival towards Venice so this is a little bit RNG we can also try and get some more alliances with the uh, enemies of the Ottomans including the Mamluks might be a little bit of a chance unless they have hostile attitude which they do have so I guess there's no chance now <laughs> we're also gonna be deleting the fortified fortification in Corfu as well as the fortification in Spalato. They don't help with anything. They drain our economy by one ducat each and they also give a free war score to the enemy because these are both easy to siege down. Well, Corfu is not necessarily easy to siege down, but it doesn't protect anything. It's literally just a waste of uh, one ducat monthly. For the time being, Treviso and Brescia are the only forts we will need. We'll place one more in uh, Trento whenever we get Trento, but that's a little bit in the future. Let's also get our advisors, discipline, trade of course since we are a trade nation and missionary strength for now we could also get the venetian arsenal that lowers the maintenance for our sailors and ship cannons plus 10 percent i'm not going to do that though the trade power is way more important as far as i'm concerned don't care about the cannons because i'm still going to have more cannons than anybody else around me because i'm just going to pump out huge amounts of galleys and that's pretty much the end of uh, the cannon fight we're going to need a lot of manpower so i'm going to slacken recruitment so i get rid of the professionalism once that's done i'm going to recruit the mercenaries not going to recruit them just yet venice also has a very interesting mission tree in the sense that it has a lot of the early missions that can be done very late down the line like uh embracing the printing press in the 1500s bro for real that's when i can do one of my early missions but okay sure whatever man we have some that we can do as well uh earlier than that like uh 60 sailor force limit and navy size 100 is going to give us 25 percent 
permanent marine force limit and that is going to be juicy for sure since our country is predominantly a seafaring country having marines of course is a must we're also going to invite the uh, knights to our trade league and we're going to cancel the guarantee on the knights because by inviting them into our trade league what we did is um we created a trade league and that means we lowered our diplo relations by one. We're going to get those diplo relations back up after we vassalize the Byzantines though. And towards that point, I'm going to also get a claim on Epirus just in case Schnapple dupe goes to Schnips and um, I cannot attack the Byzantines or something of the sort. Now let's move these units over to uh, the province of Euborea or whatever you want to call it. Not saying this word because I'm, I'm trying to play in it safe here, boys. All right, looks like we've uh, eclipsed Serbia fair enough then let's see if we can eclipse the papal states up next papal states is not bad for a humiliation war actually so we can get some show of strength against them ah of course there should be a stable government I fully agree with that <laughs> take note we have 56% of the uh, Venetian trade node at the start but if we set up the uh, protect trade edict in our Venetian home node home state that is then uh, we're gonna get significantly more in our node we can also do that in Istria for that matter since it's just one province and it has as a uh, natural harbor as well there. The history of the Venetian Republic is a little bit of a not so easy to swallow history. A lot of people don't know this, but the reason the Venetians managed to get so strong is that up until the 15th century, that means including the 1400s, the Venetians were one of the biggest slave trading countries in the world. Prior to 1000 AD, they used to do it uh, from around the entirety of the uh, Italian peninsula, they would trade in buy slaves from uh, conquering peoples in the port over here of Venice and they would ship them over to North Africa where the Moors would buy those slaves. That was a very lucrative uh, business. The Venetians managed to get up to 3,000 ships in the process. That trade itself basically propagated the Venetian Republic to what it became in the 1400s. After the Pope made it illegal to slave trade um, Catholics Take note, Catholics. What the Venetians did is they went uh, big brain and they started uh, buying uh, Eastern Europeans, which were Orthodox. So that means from the Ruthenian lands, from the uh, even some from the Valachian lands, but not as much. Most of the accounts we have say that most of the slaves came from uh, modern Ukraine and the uh, Crimean bits of uh, Eastern Europe. They would be uh, shipped over to Venice and then sold over again to North Africa or other parts of the world that required them. They even had inland routes via the Austrians so um, yeah these bad boys here were also complicit in the whole thing regardless just pointing out they're not as innocent as they seem okay just because of those fancy doge hats that don't mean nothing okay they're evil evil I tell you in fact I don't think you should ever trust a man with the doge hat okay just saying you really only can trust guys that have uh, wolf hats that's it and you probably should also subscribe to their channels if they have wolf hats oh whoa Whoa, whoa, what just happened? Oh, whoa, you know what that means, right? Right. Speaking of subscription, you should also know that if we get 5,000 likes on today's video, I'm gonna do a brand new Albania campaign where we take over the entirety of the Balkans, push out the Ottomans before the 1500 even finishes, and just have a ton of fun in the process, of course. Another really cool bit about the Venetians is that because we have our unique uh, government here, the Venetian government, we can establish trade posts, not only just trade leagues, as well as trade cities, and our leaders live 25% longer that's why this bad boy is 72 and still hasn't passed away literally as i just said that <laughs> the dude passes away okay fair enough uh let's see what do we have here we got four five two five four five oh my yes please yes yes please and he's a six five six afterwards holy do the balloon do 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 that's uh, it's Italian, by the way. It's uh, not me having a, an aneurysm. That's just Italian. <laughs> I'm going to be getting an admiral, so uh, I don't have complete trash fleets here. And I'm also going to be getting a generalus, which is not really that good. But hey, better than nothing, right? Now let's attack. I am going to set the uh, Athenians as the main war target. And let's uh, Gucci boys. Should have an easy time here. We have a significantly bigger fleet than they have. And I did not cobladrate the Serbians because they have just gotten proclaim guaranteed by the 
Ottomans. This happens a lot. If I really wanted to bypass that, I could have just released Montenegro and I could have done a 1444 war in December of 1444 against the Serbs before the uh, Ottomans guaranteed them, but it's fine. I'm just going to have a proper war against them afterwards when I attack the Bosnians that are also allied to them. I could navally barrage both of these fortifications. However, I'm not doing it because it's not necessary. We should have enough time to get this before the Ottomans attack the uh, Byzantines themselves. I'm actually going to get a second general as well. Holy schnapps, this guy's actually pretty good. Um, I might switch them around in that case so I can get that guy to um, siege down. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen here. Oh, sell the titles, you say, my boy. Hold up. Can we get two stability? We cannot. Well, it's fine. I don't need to be too greedy with my stability. All right, we managed to get more. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of what's left of Athenian uh, troops here. And then we're going to ship this over to uh, Constantinople to grab it before the Ottomans declare their war. As the Venetians, we have a ton of units and a ton of transport. So we can attack them uh, with a sizable force, meaning that we don't need to struggle about taking Constantinople from the Byzantines ourselves. I am going to, however, barrage the uh, fort in uh, Constantinople because this would take a huge amount of time. I don't have that much time to just sit around and wait for it to fall. We also can build up our marketplace in Venice City and we can build a couple more around. I'm not going to build them just yet, though. The one in Venice City is enough for the time being. Our main priority should be uh, filtering in more value in the Venetian node since we have enough of the trade power within it. A mere 500 days to take Constantinople. And of course, I am getting minus one stability because why not, right? I don't need to destroy the uh, Serbian army, but I want to destroy the Serbian army so I get some uh, extra army tradition in the process. All right, now with the most of their country occupied, they can give us the white piece we want. Even if we could take some money, I'm not doing it because I want to, um, well, I don't really, I probably should have taken the money that, now that I think about it because I'm going to attack the Bosnians afterwards. Yeah, that was not really smart on my side. <laughs> All right, now the question is, do we take Constantinople or do we take the southern bits and we let them keep Constantinople? That's the big question here. Constantinople is a great city, but taking the southern bits here might be a little bit more uh, beneficial for me. So I think that's what I'm going to be doing here. Let's also get as much money as we can take from them, which is apparently not too much. The reason I'm doing uh, both taking of land and the vassalization is because I don't want them to get too strong, but I do need them in order to uh, take back their cores that they have from the Ottomans. So I'll keep them with one province here. I'll feed them the rest of that and integrate them afterwards. And by taking the southern bits here, I also ensure that I have enough power myself to keep the Byzantines in check. Take note, this strategy we're doing here today is vastly different from the um, previous patch strategy in which we uh, formed Dalmatia, so we had to stay really small in order to do that. And we can do expand the arsenal, meaning we can now recruit the mercenary units. Also, because we have two vassals, we can get the strong duchies privilege and can also seize some crownlands. It's going to pop up some rebels. Not a big deal, though. We're going to deal with them right now. The Ottomans have 33,000 units and zero manpower. So I think my next war is going to be against the Ottomans. I was going to wait it out a little bit, but no, sir. I am going to attack them. Going to merc up also in order to attack them. Let's bring our units to the southern bits here. Because it is needed, we're going to go for the manpower reform we might change it around later down the line but for now that is what we're going for all right i managed to get 10 favors with the austrians meaning that they will join me in the war i'm gonna see if i can also get albanians in the war because albania's got that juicy chad lord uh, skanderberg oh really albania you're not gonna join no way bro no freaking way actually let's see if the knights want to join they also got a core on the ottomans they will there you go if i offer to give them back the lands as in give their core back then uh, they will join me so i'm gonna use the knights of fleets in this particular war and i just realized that i have five out of five diplo relations so i'm not even over my diplo relation slots now all right let's boys we're gonna set up uh, as a uh, retake core tirhala the war target and we shall be crushing them now we will absolutely crush them we got a massive fleet we're gonna use the uh, naval barrages to take selani gelibolu assaultius go boys go 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 uh yeah okay let's let's quickly assault this so we come on you gotta fall you have got to full freaking Salonik. <gasps> oh, okay, it did fall. We did lose 8,000 units though. Oh my god, that is horrible. That is actually genuinely horrible. Okay, let's go for Gelibolo now. Once more, we shall be assaulting this one as well. Honestly, the best part is that we have complete control of Anatolia. So I'm gonna get my war score from sieging down all of Anatolia now. Since the Ottomans are still in Hungary, by the time that they come back to unsiege what I sieged in the Balkans, Anatolia is gonna be mine and I'm gonna win this war. Look at that, guys. We got 73% war score and we didn't do a single
single battle with the Ottomans yet. <laughs> we just basically went for most of their fortifications. Wait, what? I could actually get all the provinces I want from them? No freaking way. I could get the money, but how much of that would go to me? 873 would go to me. Should I piece them out now then? Hmm, that's a tough one. That's actually a tough one. I couldn't take the Ionian lands. I want to take the Ionian lands. I want to take that bit as well. Maybe this one too. So I have all of these areas. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to wait for a little bit longer till I get 100%. And as you probably guessed it, Barrage is time yes again. Forgot to put a general in this guy. Oof. Oh no, they pieced out the Hungarians. They did a quick peace deal because they only took one province. So now they're primarily going to focus on me, aren't they? Dude, are you kidding me? They took this back in like 70 days or some schnapps, man. What the F, bro? Luckily, the Austrians will take it back again. Hey, after 400 days of uh, suggling in there, the Suglians decided to stop sugging. I was wondering where the Ottoman army was, right? And then I just noticed that they're in freaking Vienna, bro. Like out of all places, they have a desire to be sieging down Vienna, don't they? Always. Aha, we took back a deer and you bastard. And we just took Sinop also. Actually, is that gonna be enough to get the war score that I want? But this should be enough. Hot damn, we got Ankara. Okay, let's check it out now. Yep, look at that, boy. 146, 148, not a single nation in any potential coalition. We lost 42,000, mostly to attrition and so on. But yeah, we, uh, we barely fought them, man. And we managed to take most of these lands for ourselves. That is beautiful right there. Oh, no, they made an ALA out of Transylvania. Dude, no. Okay, now there's no more use for the castle in Moria. Let's dismantle it and let's uh, get rid of the multiple rebels we managed to, to get around our country whilst we were at war. Now I'm planning to reset the truce with the Ottomans to make it a five years truce by uh, attacking Ragusa. Sadly right now it's 83-83 so I just need to give it a little bit of time until the Ottomans actually join in that war. You probably guessed it but I'm trading favors for trust with the Knights since I didn't give them the province. This way I get to keep them as an ally perhaps in the next war against the Ottomans. I'm gonna give the Ottomans a a little bit more time sadly it still looks like they're not gonna join in the war helping out the Ragusans because they got economic issues so until they fix those economic issues I'm gonna go to war with the Bosnians Serbians how cute the Byzantines actually are helping me out against the Serbs Oh, sorry, the, uh, that's Naxos. How did I confuse the Byzantines with Naxos? No, look, the Byzantines are helping. They're over here. <laughs> oh, I'm going to let them stay attached to this army in that case. And actually, you know what? Let's do this first. And let's send a secondary army with the rest of these bad boys to the other province. I want to give a big shout out to the Bosnian rebels that enforced their demands just before getting stack wiped by me. Essentially giving me free lands within, uh, within the former Herzegovina bits. So, uh. Here's to you, Bosnia bros. When it comes to our first uh, national idea, obviously Plutocratic is the best choice there because we get morale of armies, reform progress growth, one extra merchant, goods produced, development and caravan power, as well as provincial trade power modifier. And the best part is the policies with Plutocratic are absolutely amazing. Oh no, Bosnia, du hast no more Truppensteinski. The real problem now is going to be managing the aggressive expansion. Let's see how much we're going to be getting. So Obviously, we're not getting anything here from the Bosnians because, well, it's the first Catholic nation that we've attacked, technically, on paper, okay? But now, Albania, we did not co so that might bite us in the ass because they're also Catholic. So let's see the big deal here. Actually, the big deal is Valachia, Hungary, Ragusa, Telia. So honestly, not that big of a deal. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. We got half of the Balkans already in 1459 with barely any effort. Let's check if we can attack the Ottomans now, though. We can! 85-49. Amazing! Alright, let's uh, leave behind here some units so we can actually fight against Ragusa. And we can do a few of our missions here too. Total development 200. Gives a mercenary maintenance and cost reduction. That's pretty cool actually. Has grown by two states. And contest Genoese. Oh, Genoese node. We gotta have 50%. That's gonna take a while. I'm also gonna be improving relations with the French. Because I want to change my Austrian alliance to a French alliance. After I've uh, consulted consolidated the Balkan area. And now let's do that quick war I was talking about. I forgot. Oh my god, I don't have the claim anymore. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> I need the claim on them, <laughs> bro. No, dude, why did this guy have to die, bro? Seriously, he's only 71 years old. Okay, let's see what do we have. 225060. 
Oh god, they're all trash. I'm gonna let the lottery decide because they're all bad. 060. Wow. He is 71 though. He is 71. So he might pass away soon. Let's see. Fingers crossed. And we managed to get our claim again on Ragusa. Let's go ahead with the war. Boom shakalokos. We just need uh, a little bit of war score to peace out the Ottomans. We don't actually want to take anything from them in this war at least. All right, now we can push back the Pope. They seem to have taken Ravenna from us. I'm not sure if I'll take anything since I did not co-belligerate the Pope. But I will go for my uh, humiliation. No, I forgot I changed it because I grew too big. Oh, that sucks. Dude, what? 30 Republican tradition for that? Oh yeah i guess and we can do this mission quickly also i i i probably should um encourage development here yeah it's just for one year it's okay it's temporary boys this way we got a lot of money from it 121 ducats not bad and venice build a dry dock also not bad also let's go for that as well let's uh build the dry dock in venice i'm gonna make you cancel your core on ravenna since uh since screw you pope that's why since screw you man and maybe war reps yeah that should be fine 81 87 it's Ayo Keke with Tame. Of course, it is the end of Ragusa's reign. Since Ragusa is an integral part of my country, everybody knows there's no such thing as Ragusa. It's just Dalmatian Venice, really. Time for a proper expansion of my fleet. I'm gonna build 15 light ships and the flagship which is also going to be a light ship. It's going to have trade power per ship and fleet. Fleet engagement with because I will use it in combat in the Mediterranean and fleet movement speed. Of course, we also got to give it a proper name. Very, very standard uh, Italian name, that is. Oh my lord, we're making 17 ducats profit already. I don't even know what to do with that. And I haven't even started properly uh, playing economically, let's say, as this nation. We haven't even lowered the autonomy. Let's do that. Let's uh, scale up the gold mining. In Kosovo and so on and then after I'll show you how much money we made from just a couple of quick interactions here let's go with this bad boy here as well there you go nine we're gonna eventually get it up to ten so now we got 21 ducats from just a few clicks around the country really oh these guys actually left the HRE man okay let's check what the situation was Ferrara <gasps> oh Yes, sir, please. I need that. I need that land uh, tactically mine, okay? Because I also need to push this a little bit. I'm gonna be uh, barraging that so we get this quicker. Saca Ferrara, you say? Sure, why not? 140 ducats worth it for this. Um, Well, that sucks there. What the F, man? Ferrara City is the one they care about because it's got the trade power. The other one, Modena, doesn't really have any trade power. We still have to wait until we siege down Landshut, sadly. And we got a lot of rebel problems in the Balkans. Again, it's almost as if the Balkans is a land full of rebellions hey we got land shit okay so that means we're gonna get these bad boys now and as i said only the one city is enough for me hopefully they uh take out the other province if they don't then at least i managed to um get what uh, trade power i need to get from ferrara city let's also give out the uh nobility integration policy since we started actually integrating uh naxos and now we can also begin with the war against the Ottomans again. This time, we're going to take all the Balkan holdings. Plus, did they just get rid of the Aelid? Because that makes no sense. What the F? AI is massive brain, clearly. All right, let's go with uh, Philippe as the war target. And that's it. Buyas Nokos. So as I was saying, it's going to be all of the Balkans in this war. Plus, I will try to get a foothold over in uh, the Asian bits that they have. Maybe Coachelli or something of the sorts. Let's see. I might not do it, depending on the war square i guess too to be fair though the ottomans are totally a pushover now since uh they've got like twenty thousand units it's not even any sort of a challenge anymore i'd say that the mamluks are more of a challenge now than the ottomans are speaking of let's actually start getting our claim on them ed Dirn also fell super fast also i almost forgot to create my trade post in uh Eo Robea or whatever this province is again because uh this offers quite a little bit of uh, trade power wait did this not reset there you go 26 trade power in this province after we built the trade post in there tier 4 government reform i'm gonna go for the one that offers local unrest from cathedrals reduction as well as tax because i've built quite a few churches in the uh higher development provinces and i feel like uh it's a nice way of making churches actually worth something in the game can someone explain to me when did the ottomans have time to take these provinces from crimea i didn't even see that happening <laughs> and why is crimea reduced to one province oh oh they're reduced 
to a one province miner with a lot of cores. Right. Okay. Well, that's a um, very juicy province there. <laughs> Start construction of two barks for a total cost of 0%. Uh, yeah, sure. Sure. Why not? I could get 400. No, I could get how much? 352 ducats. I want, instead of that, a province here. So I could take Coachelli. How much coalition would that be? Mamluks, Poland. Yeah, you know what? I don't care. Bring it on, boys. Bring it on. You want to piss at this? You want to piss at this? Let's go. Let's go, boys. Plus, now I can put on the thumbnail that, hey, 1470, we got all of the Balkans. And we actually did. <laughs> also, we went up to 25% um, crownlands. Could sell some of that. 1,200 ducats would be enough to invest a lot in my country. But no, I'm going to keep it for now. I'm not going to sell it just yet. I still need to attack the Hungarians, actually, for the Croatian bits. Yeah, should be fine. Because I'm thinking I want to also attack the Mamluks after. So I could have a quick war with the Hungarians. And then again, uh, another not so quick war with the Mamluks for the triple Italian bits. Essentially, what I want to do is I want to expand in this area and work my way into North Africa. Trade company all of the schnapps out of here and out of Alexandria. And get the extra merchants from those trade companies and the extra trade, obviously. Right now, our trade node is the strongest trade node with 20 value. 15.6 in Genoa, 7.9 in Sevilla, and 12.4 uh, in the uh, English Channel node. We are outshining the schnapps out of all of them. And with the Hungarians out of the way, we're going to get even more out of that because we're going to get all the Ragusan provinces in this war. Boy, is the city of Pest such a pest, except it's not really. It's falling super fast. <laughs> I'm essentially occupying their entire country whilst they're trying to siege down my uh, vassals fortifications. So just a uh, massive brain AI right there. Hey, we've uh, we've got rid of the pest. <laughs> That's uh. God, that's not funny at all. Now I truly get the hate gang, you know? I get it. My jokes, that's how I started the hate gang. Oh, Ferdinand I of Austria is the new emperor. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for taking your time to fall, tell ya, you freaking scumbags. And that was also the end of the uh, Hungarian army. Cool. Okay, let's do that then. Trade power also and all the money you can give me. There you go. Beautiful. Now get the schnapps out of my face, okay? Look how beautiful we are, boys. Look how absolutely beautiful the entirety of the Balkans is ours. Let's get rid of the rebels that popped out for the 11th time. Just casual Balkan things, guys. Just uh, casual Balkan things. Wait, what? I can join coalition? Excuse me, what? Against France. Okay. Well, actually, do I really want to go in a coalition against France? I don't feel like I want to go in a coalition against them. Yeah, they're really friendly towards me. Nah, screw that. We're going to coalition the bastards. I'm going to get an alliance with the Castilians also since uh, we might go to war with the French later down the line. Now, I've assigned the most of my trade ships to uh, propagate trade in the Alexandria node since this way most of the Alexandria nodes going to be filtering directly into my node and as consequence we have freaking 42 ducats from trade alone 68 total income by 1475 not bad whatsoever so the profit is 37 ducats if we don't pay for our uh, armies right now truly a trade empire and if you enjoy this trade empire you're gonna love my Brandenburg run until the next time.